Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise to ask question 66 of 2017 and uh, in the order paper for today. My question to the Minister for Health and Medical Services. Can the Minister update the House on the state of the Newborn Intensive Care Unit, NICU, at Colonial War Memorial Hospital? Following the Anthocyanobacter Bomani bacteria infection outbreak. Thank you. Honorable Minister for Health and Medical Services, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I thank the Honorable Member for the question. Madam Speaker, for the, uh, the information of the House, the uh, Newborn Intensive Care Unit at CWM is uh, fully functional and operating as normal. But at this point, I'd also like to provide the House with more details of the events that led to the infection uh, within the unit. Madam Speaker, healthcare associated infections or infections acquired in healthcare settings are among the most frequent adverse events in any healthcare delivery worldwide. The World Health Organization estimates that 7% of patients in developed countries and 10% of patients in developing countries will acquire at least one healthcare associated infection during their stay in the hospital. Intensive care units like uh, the newborn intensive care unit at CWM are particularly susceptible to healthcare associated infections. And even in the world's best healthcare, as many as three out of every 10 patients who spend time in an intensive care unit will acquire an infection during their stay. Bacterial outbreaks, such as that recently experienced at CWM, are therefore not that unusual across hospitals worldwide. Madam Speaker, the decision to close the uh, newborn intensive care unit at CWM was made after the present of, presence of Asintobacter bomani bacterium that was detected in a number of newborn babies. The bacterium was found after the babies underwent basic screening protocols, including blood cultures and cerebral spinal fluid tests, which are normally done on babies who are admitted with infections. And in speaker, in total, seven patients in the neonatal intensive care unit uh, and pediatric intensive care unit were confirmed to be carrying the bacterium. As a result, the hospital decided to close its neonatal intensive care unit and divert all outpatient services to nearby health centers. <laughs> Madam Speaker, the Asintobacter bomani bacterium is widely found in soil, water, and other parts of the environment. While it doesn't harm most healthy people with strong immune systems, the bacterium can lead to illnesses in individuals with severe health challenges, and this, in this case, newborn babies. The source of the latest outbreak is unknown at the stage and realistically will take us some time. At this point, I'd like to convey my greatest appreciation towards WHO for its commitment and assistance in the endeavors to eliminate this bacterial infection. The World Health Organization has assisted us by providing us with infection control materials and we will continue to seek the technical expertise to support our investigations to determine determine the actual cause of this outbreak by genotyping the bacteria, and this may take up to three months. As I've explained, Madam Speaker, outbreaks such as these are not unusual, and the staff at CWM are well prepared to respond. The Infection Control Committee at CWM Hospital acted promptly to control the infection by relocating our babies to other units, screening and treating those babies who were already infected. As such, uh, I'd also like to put on record my sincere appreciation to the staff and the infection control team for the tremendous effort in ensuring that all appropriate measures were taken to curb the bacterial infection as into Bacter Bomani. Um, I'd also like to formally acknowledge the support provided by local staff from the WHO who responded quickly and effectively to assist our local team. Can I speak of the CWM Hospital's neonatal intensive care unit has now reopened to new admissions and services are back to normal. It was important to ensure that bacterium had been fully eliminated before uh, the neonatal intensive care unit was reopened, which is why it took us a total of 14 days from the time of the bacterial infection outbreak to getting services back to normal. To reopen any sooner would have put more babies and other vulnerable patients at risk. Madam Speaker, the uh, CWM hospital, like any tertiary hospital throughout the world, has in place infection control measures to monitor for bacterial infection outbreaks and to manage any such outbreaks with prudent action. The ministry, through its clinical experts and facility managers and supervisors in the hospitals, work diligently to ensure that infection control measures are maintained and strengthened. We are firmly committed to re resourcing 
the implementation of universal precautionary measures that are needed to keep the risk of resistant bugs and infection outbreaks low. Furthermore, the Ministry also recognises that any process can always be improved and we are open to learning from experience. With that in mind, we are in the process of inviting WHO to conduct a formal review of the recent outbreak. In the longer term, work is progressing to expand the CWM maternity unit as congestion is known as one of the factors that can increase the risk of infection outbreaks. A dedicated design team is currently working out the final plans to accomplish this. This initiative will ease much of the congestion at the maternity unit and the neonatal intensive care unit. Madam Speaker, we also look for patients and the public for support in following the advice of experts to reduce the risk of infections, to cooperate with any, uh, any infection control measures that are put in place, and from time to time to understand that services may be need to be put on hold while outbreaks are, are, are addressed, protecting patients and ensuring their safety will always be our priority. Madam Speaker, uh, one of the things that I did not mention is uh, this bacteria. Any bacterial outbreak is um, further worsened through contact, and as a result, they, they are normally when there is a break in the service, we try to put a uh, put a stop on the visiting hours because we believe that entry in and out of the of these intensive care units can also lead to uh, the spread of the bacterial infections. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Honourable uh, Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, it's alarming to note the Honourable Minister saying that the source of the outbreak is still unknown at this time. So I'm interested to know if there were any, if any babies died from this bacterial outbreak and, and how many. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honourable Minister. Let us speak up for the information of the House. Uh, we, uh, just sorry. There were seven, uh, uh, it started over the weekend when two babies had the bacteria and they were tested for it. The team looked over the three months period and found out that there were five other babies with the same bacteria that had occurred before that. So all in all, there were um, seven deaths and like I've mentioned, for a healthy person, uh, a healthy person's immune system will be resistant to any bacterial infection. In this case, we had seven uh, premature babies who were infected uh, with this um, SN Bector Bomani, and we are still in the, in the process to determine whether this bacterium actually caused the death of those babies. Like I said, we have um, uh, invited WHO to, to come on board, and further tests will be conducted to determine whether the deaths were related to this uh, bacterial outbreak. Thank you. I give the floor to the Honourable Thank you, Madam Speaker. I thank the Minister for the uh, reply. Uh, you know, Madam Speaker, that the uh, maternity unit is uh, very congested, has no parking space, and uh, the mothers are exposed to the pollution from the road. Uh, the few uh, car parks there are reserved for staff, and the parents have to carry their babies, newborn babies, across the road to take them home. Um, does the government have any plan, uh, Minister? to re relocate the uh, maternity unit to a more conducive environment. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Minister. Uh, sorry, sorry. Yes, Madam Speaker, and I thank the Honourable Member for the question. Uh, during my presentation, I did mention that there is a plan to expand the maternity unit at CWM. It's already in the initial design phase, and we are looking at the completion of the project by 2020. <coughs> So hopefully, when the project is completed, we will be able to erase all these issues that the maternity unit currently is facing. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Anarivandi. My supplementary question, uh, Madam Speaker, whether the hospital got the capabilities in terms of technical and professional capabilities in detecting much to a faster pace in relation to some of these outbreaks. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Minister. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Like I said, the, the teamwork and the effort of the clinicians at the hospital with the senior managers and the assistants of WHO, we were able to control the outbreak of this infection uh, further. And yes, we are working with WHO and other agencies to build up capacity on our local staff. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Minister. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, 
I, I know the minister is uh, trying very hard and, and I know that she's working very hard to improve the services in the hospitals. Just on this issue, when I speak, I want to ask the minister if the government or your ministry is considering a compensation for all those mothers who've lost their babies. Thank you, Honourable Minister. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I thank the Honourable Member for the question. Madam Speaker, as I've stated at this point in time, we are trying to uh, look at the, uh, the causes that led to those seven deaths. And uh, as I've also mentioned, that it may take up to three months to do a genotyping on, on that bacterial infection. And as such, we will determine what course of action to take later on. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Prince. Thank you, Minister, for your question. Very hardworking Minister. Uh, can this bacterial outbreak be caused by unhygienic conditions that uh, uh, unhygienic conditions around the hospital environment uh, lack, uh, due to lack of cleanliness as seen from a mother and a baby lying elsewhere, madam? Thank you, Honorable Minister. Madam Speaker, there are many causes that lead to such bacterial outcome. I've said it's, it could be carried on by soil, water and other environmental factors. And uh, one of the things that we emphasize and stress, stress upon in our ICU units is best hand practices. Anybody who enters the ICU units must um, have best hand hygiene practices at bedsides because bacteria are, um, it's very easy to uh, contaminate facilities through unwashed hands, etc. So anybody entering our ICU units is required to wear a um, hygienic gown and to, to use the at our patients. One of, one of the things again at our patients that we practice is the best hand wash hygiene practices. That's where bacteria is normally spread from. Uh, bacteria is easily spread by touching somebody or touching equipment. Anything within the facility that is touched by a person who has that bacteria it, uh, can lead to an outbreak. So one of the most important things that we stress upon our facilities is the basic um, hand hygiene practices for, for the time being. Thank you. Thank you. And I give the floor to Young Hormate.